Guys, welcome back to another show. It was a great show. Make sure you listen all the way to the end. Uh, I shared some yeah. emotional history of my past that so many people, you probably don't know about me just because I've never spoken about it yeah. one of the on the internet before. One of the questions kind of uh, threw us off a little yeah. bit because we don't view the questions and this one kind of was like, uh, are we supposed to answer this question? When I'm directly asked, I tell the truth. Yeah, so, so anyway, that's what happened. stay tuned, enjoy the show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of... Hashtag Ask TV. Thanks for tuning in. We're on episode number 44. 44. And uh, last week's show got a little heated. It did. Felt good, though. Yeah, and thank you guys for all of your you know, commentary and support and interaction because the show is about you guys and for you guys and just letting you know our opinions. That's right. And uh, you wanted to share a little something on camera. Um, about last week's episode? No, about, uh, just go like this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so Brad doesn't beat me, just so you know. <laughs> um, I kind of felt like you should have brought, she said it before we started filming, like, uh. Well, I was in the bathroom, like, fixing my hair, and I was like, wait, they're going to notice this. So, this is a volleyball injury, and Brad had nothing to do with it. You guys saw on Snapchat, I was actually on the sidelines with the baby, so. Yes, but. it's just because I joined a volleyball league and I haven't played in three years and my wrists are overly sensitive. So yeah. I, it didn't happen on this side, but this side is bruised. So if you're listening on the podcast, she has a bruised bruise on my wrist. wrists. Just one side. And it's not a big deal, but it does look ugly. Innocent. <laughs> it's not like it's as, not as, as like scary or as ridiculous as that is that you have to bring that up like it's kind of like it's yeah. you got to point it out like in this day and age as sad as that yeah, is it's funny but, you see a woman with a bruise and the first thought yeah. is like it's her husband or a kid with a bruise I it's know, the parents true. anyway yeah. we're getting off topic it's here not. let's get right back on topic mm -hmm. i love you baby mm -hmm. I love you too. Okay. I know you would never bruise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get back to living lean. Uh, first question. Oh, before we do that, if you're new to the show, as we always say, you can send us a question using the hashtag AskLivingTV. Send it here on Twitter. You could come on Snapchat, on Instagram, or on Facebook. Facebook. And if you guys aren't following our uh, Instagram living TV account, Jessica has been posting a lot of stories on there, so make sure you're going following us over there on Living TV. A lot of snippets from my workouts, and tonight I just showed what we had, what we had for dinner, okay. and some tips on how to make good salads. So yes. a lot of quality content on there. So All right. Join. Okay. Desert Mike says, in the past, was there ever something, either workouts or nutrition or policy, that you swore by, but you found to not be so good? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Worry. Yeah, that's a great question. We've had like. I've been asked like tens of thousands of questions in my uh, fitness career. I don't Never know if that I've one. ever been asked that question before. Uh, well, some people hmm. ask it, but they just go, oh, how come you used to eat rice and you don't that's, anymore? That's, right? It's like they ask that's that That's where way. my mind yeah. initially went. Like how come you used to say oats were yeah. a superfood and now you don't eat my, them? Yeah, so like, like I, did, I did an 18 video superfood series back in 2012, like yeah. when I first started. Early on this channel. And that's when I was eating... Uh, grains and you know so so oats yeah. rice um, and that's where my mind initially went to but it's not to say that those foods are not like healthy like once again guys those foods are better than eating french fries or onion rings yeah. or like all these things so and in comparison to in comparison Captain crunch like yes. oatmeal is a superfood in yeah, comparison like, yeah but once i uh you know took a step back and was seeing how I was reacting to these foods. Not even took a step back, took a step forwards, like experienced forward. more. Like yeah. you experienced more of results over more time. So what I did was um, I was realizing like I was having some issues like, you know, bloatingness. Mm -hmm. I found it made me feel a lot hungrier. Like I was yeah, eating yeah. a lot and I just could never fill myself up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a blood test done with a naturopath to see uh, food intolerances. And some of these foods that I was saying back then um, didn't agree with my body. So that's not to say it doesn't agree with your body. And once again, it's not like they're the worst of the worst foods. Right. Sure, there's better alternatives for your calories if your goal is fat loss and probably overall health. But um, yeah, I would just say that, um, those things. What? A, oh, I know a good one for you, Mike. This one is called the carb monster who comes out after 6 p.m. Oh, yes. Right? That, that's, we always joke about that's that a now good one. because... Oh man, when I first started fitness, I believed that so hardcore that and one. I would not touch 
a food that had carbohydrates after 6 p.m. Like for months I did this. I just like believed it so hardcore that anything I ate after six o'clock at night would automatically turn to fat. Like, I don't know, where did I even get that information? Well, I mean, the idea of it is, know. I still believe in the idea of um, surrounding, timing, nutrient timing, timing yeah. the carbs intake around your workouts. That's when your body needs the fuel to repair, to recover and grow. So if your workouts are at nine o'clock at night, right, then you have, have at it meal at, at night. night. Right. So it's when, it's not necessarily what the clock says, right. it's what your body says and what you're doing. So that's right. a good one. That's what yeah, I would that's say. That's why we always laugh about that. And we're like, oh, the car yeah. monster gonna get you, but <laughs> it's like, it's not that yeah. simple. Yeah. But good question, Mike, I like it. Okay, next question on Twitter from Chris Bravo says, what's your opinion on fasted cardio? Is it healthy? Um, I think fasted cardio is fine. Um, you know, we talk a lot about intermittent fasting where you delay your eating window until like noon or later and it's fine. It works for a lot of people. Um, it's, you don't have to do fasted cardio. Like in my opinion, it's not more or less effective than doing cardio after eating. Um, I think that what's most effective is what makes you feel the best. So for some people, they're really super, um, what do you call it, hangry. When they're hmm. hungry, they get cranky. And then go, trying to do cardio when you're hungry and cranky is like you're just going to be like have a bad yeah, attitude about the whole thing. So just eat something, make yourself happier, and then have a better workout. <laughs> no, you know? that's, that's a great point. Like I think if you looked at this, the research studies, and I've seen some of these where they put people who go and they do cardio in the morning on a full stomach, versus a person on um, fasted, yeah. which one burns more fat. I think the studies do show that a slightly fasted, increased fat burn. but yeah. like getting back right. to your point, yeah. if you are so sluggish that your workouts are lagging, you're not sprinting with intensity, where you could sprint with way more intensity if you had food in yourself, you know, it's, it's really like that thing, it's that balancing act. So for me personally, I train fasted in the mornings. Like I prefer that way. Because you enjoy that. Yeah. Well, I mean, not because of the, the fat, not because of fat burning percentage, right? Um, it, I mean, I think for me that factors in there. Really? Like I, I kind of I'm like that approach. About Brad that but I don't, know. Um, I don't know. For some reason, like I find when I have too much food in me, I feel sluggish. I don't want to train. Yeah. Um, but if I'm like fasted, you know, there's some times where I'm like, I would love to slam some food before, but it's just like once I get in there and just get moving, I feel just more energetic without food in me during my workouts. And then when I get home, I'm like, I can just eat, eat, eat because mm -hmm. A, I'm breaking the fast, which I need a lot of calories. B, I'm breaking or I'm repairing myself after my workout, which is when you need to have a lot of calories too. So I'm like pairing those two things. I can just get the food into me and just go on with my day. So for me, I'm kind of the opposite. Like I like to train when I've had some food, but not super recently. So I would eat a meal one to two hours before my workout. And that would be like ideal for me. If it's been more than three to four hours, since my last meal, then I start to feel hungry and then I would debate whether I wanna eat first or work out first. But in my ideal day, I would be training two hours after my last meal. So whether that's after breakfast or after lunch or sometimes even after dinner, I want to have some food in my stomach but not like have just eaten, you yeah. know? For me, if, it's, if my workout's later in the day, I like to have two to three hours between um, before my workout before your workout yeah, yeah. I, so so yeah some of it is personal preference is. and then oh also figure out what works for you yeah and regarding the you know burning more percentage of fat during the workout thing you also have to look at your overall uh, you know daily calorie burn because a harder workout is going to give you more of that epoch you know the exercise the post oxygen afterburn. consumption yeah the otherwise known as the afterburn which we have an entire program based on um, so you, like we said, if your workout's suffering because you're hungry mm. and cranky, then I would just not do fasted yeah. cardio. Yeah, and if like all of a sudden, this is my last point on this. Okay. So if you like decide to do fasted cardio to test it out to see what it's like in your first day, you just feel sluggish and everything, it's because it's your first day. You gotta yeah. give it time, like anything. Like your body's gonna adapt to it. Just like when you're going lower carb, your body needs time to adapt to it. You're gonna feel really crappy after the first few days, but once you get adapted, it's good. So if you're gonna try fasted workouts, Give it a week or so to, to make sure you totally get your body adapted. Next yeah, question. You guys don't don't give up on anything on the first day or even the first week. No. Like body transformation isn't something that happens within 24 hours. Yeah. It takes months. For some people, it takes years. So don't give up too soon. 
Okay, Anna Malocha on Twitter says, what do you think about having good, bad attitude while trying to lose weight? Does it really matter progress-wise and how you feel about your body? Ah. That's an awesome question also. I mean, I 100% think yeah. it has tons to do with it. I know, and I love talking about that. I feel like it's not talked about enough. Like your attitude towards your progress or towards your journey in general is huge, you know, because if you're just like angry and cranky and feel like deprived and um, like you have to do this and you can't do that, like your behavior is going to change. Like your attitude affects your behavior, which your behavior then affects your results. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to what you say is rather than looking at it as you have to work out or you have to eat these vegetables, you have to eat this salad, look at it as you can work out. You get You're to lucky eat. enough to yeah, be like, able to work out. It just goes yeah. back to the whole gratitude thing, guys. Like yeah. we are so grateful that we can actually move our body. We can yeah. actually choose to go to the gym. We have the freedom to go to the gym. Like you're doing your body a service by doing that. Absolutely. So I think, and it's also- Not the, everyone can. And it's also the, goes back to belief as well. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people will look in the mirror at themselves and they'll be like, I hate what I see. This is never going to change. And it's never going to change. Yeah, exactly. If you, you know, believe it's never going to change, self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. There you have it. So um, honestly, if you want like the the approach to, because I assume that you kind of do have a bad attitude asking that question um, because you're thinking like, does having a good or bad attitude? So yeah, like, to me, it, it seems matter? like maybe you're going at this, like if I can keep this bad attitude, I can <laughs> get results. I think you need to really switch your mindset because that's the first step to making this a lifestyle, making this uh, living lean as a lifestyle. So go check out my book. A lot of people, um, I think a lot of you guys haven't quite picked up my book yet. And um, it's on Amazon, thinkandlivelean.com. You can go to there. It's going to redirect you to Amazon. There's so many positive reviews on my book in there. So it's like the first step to transform your mind so then you can take your body there. Like I said in my Facebook video the other day, I said, you can't uh, get the body of your dreams until you get your mind on board first. Like your mind has to arrive there first before your body does. So just yeah. think about that. And the other thing I always tell people is that your body can hear everything you're thinking and saying about it. So if every time you look in the mirror, you're thinking, oh, I'm so fat and ugly and out of shape, you know, your body's absorbing those kinds of feelings and emotions. And it's just, I don't know, that may seem like mystical to you guys, but I truly believe that your body listens to, you know, what you're saying about it and is a reflection of what's going on internally. And I know that I used to bash my body and hate my body and I like complain about my thighs being too fat and my boobs being too small and yada, 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 like all these complaints. And when I was able to shift my mindset, that was monumentally huge for me because, you know, now I just look for the good attributes and celebrate the things that I love about my body. And, you know, in turn, I feel like my body looks better, functions better, and yeah. feels better than it ever has. Yeah. So I would just say, just look, when you look at yourself in the mirror, just realize you're on a journey. Mm -hmm. Like you're not there yet. But by doing what we're talking about on this show, you're getting step by step the daily progress. So just remember that. Yeah. And you got to believe that workouts and nutrition do make an impact because if you believe they do, you'll do them and then you'll see. Okay. Next question on Twitter from Dahlia Milana Vela says, Hey guys, just because do you have brothers or sisters? Do you plan to have more babies? Happy new year. How do you want to handle this? Okay. It's fine. You want to go? Yeah, I mean, he's looking at me no, because... Just, you yeah. want, okay, we'll just cut into it now. I don't but want no, that to be fine, on No, it's fine, babe. No, it shows that uh, you're concerned. Okay. Like, it's sweet. All right. I love you for that. Okay. Um, not everyone knows this about me because we don't talk about this often on this channel. And I think you're like nervous I'm going to start crying or something, but I'm not. It's been a long time and I've accepted the truth of what's happened in my life and... Just to give you guys the story in a nutshell, um, I had an older brother who was killed with his girlfriend when I was 18 and he was 20 and so was his girlfriend. Um, it's not an easy thing to talk about. It's not something that I ever really like broadcast publicly, but you asked specifically, so I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, I miss him. My whole family misses him. It's a major loss for our family and of course we wish that Kyla had her uncle. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, I do have a sibling or I did. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right guys. So, I mean, that just shows you that we, 
don't look at the questions before they come in. Yeah, like, I know. I didn't know that we, one was uh, yeah. Like our assistant, Caro, sends them to us. and I But have... I don't want anyone to feel bad for asking. No. But like it's a normal <clears throat> question to ask. And, you know, this is something I've had to deal with for the last, it's been 13 years. <clears throat> um, so it just comes up in conversation a lot. And maybe it's easier for me if I talk about it on the internet because then everyone will know and then I, I won't get asked as much. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it before. Like I, I opened up about my past and like I was yeah. saying like about you, like, you know, if you ever feel comfortable about it. Like I think people respect that you're real, that you yeah. have, like you don't live a perfect life. Right. And, and that I definitely had tragedy that I had to yeah. overcome. And yeah, like every day of my life hasn't been peachy. I spent like six months after he died, like literally doing nothing, like could barely eat, could barely leave the house. Like it was, I was 18 and it was the biggest tragedy. Yeah. Um, but you know, I just want you guys to know that there is light at the end of whatever tunnel that you're in. And I know a lot of you guys watching have had tragedy in your own life because we're human and that's the way life is. Um, but he was a huge inspiration to me and like the reason that I even got into fitness in the first place. So I'll always be grateful to mm -hmm. my brother for that. Like, you know, um, it's just thanks to him that I am even where I am right now. But I went through a period where I had a really bad attitude about it. And I was like, why did this have to happen to me? And like, you know, just going down that terrible rabbit hole of like self pity and just not, not healthy behaviors. So I am also grateful, especially to you, babe, because, you know, you've supported me a lot. And yeah. so, well, yeah. Well, appreciate you sharing that. Like, yeah. I, I love that you, you feel comfortable enough to share that with our viewers. Hopefully you and guys... This is, our, this is our internet family. Yeah, you guys so. really are our yeah. family. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. You obviously, it was tough for her to bring up, but um, I have a... My, my background's a little bit easier. <laughs> I have a brother. Yeah. Um, lives in Bermuda, just one brother. And actually, yeah. he's moving back to Toronto, so it's going to give us... Uh, excuse to get back to Toronto again. So, um, and yeah, he's a great uncle to Kyla, and so she at least yeah. has one uncle. And then the other question was it plan on more babies? So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, except um, I don't know the reason we're, we're waiting because it's only been six months <laughs> since we had our first one, and I don't know. I just think we should wait a little bit longer, <laughs> even though we kind of feel ready. We're just looking at each other like, are we? I, I kind of like, feel like let's just get it going and get on with our life. We just like, want to get Kyla more to like the toddler stage yeah. before we introduce number two, but I don't know. Like, we keep debating between two kids and three kids. No, we, we don't. You do. I, I say do. Too. I want to have three kids. I like, just want Kyla to have a little brother now. So yeah, and then but, maybe adopt a third one. Yeah, we'll see. But family is so important, and it's like, yeah. Thank you for asking because I guess we're getting more personal, which is good. Okay. Okay. Next question on YouTube from Millie McBug. Two girls who look up to me have been trying to lose weight to look better, but they're going about it unhealthily, and I don't know how to help. Oh. One girl asked seriously why she couldn't just stop eating. And both discuss binging for the holidays and then being very strict to lose 30 pounds. Ouch. One is slightly overweight, but the other has no spare weight. I love them to pieces, but kind of worried they'll develop eating disorders. Thank you. So I guess the question is, how can, what can they do to help? Or what can what she can do to help person, them? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Ooh, that is tricky. I'm trying to think of what I would do in that situation. if I, Because it sounds like you just overheard them <clears throat> saying this. They didn't actually say it to you. And that can be a tricky place because sometimes people don't want um, unsolicited advice. Well, no, they, they, they. she said one girl asked. Oh, she did ask. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, then if she asked, I would tell them the I, truth. I would, ref I would tell them, like, there's a difference between being skinny and being fit and healthy. Yes. Two completely different things. Yes. Like, you see these... Um, people who are like on the cover of magazines, like celebrity magazines, and their arms are just like string beans. They're brittle looking, like yeah, you blow on them out. and they yeah. could like fall over and break a bone. Like that's not healthy. So it's like, it don't foc tell them don't focus on just being thin and skinny and losing weight. Focus on getting strong, being healthy, like building lean muscle. That's what their focus should be. I know yeah. it's easier said than done, Tell them to watch our damn channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can convert them. <laughs> Allow us to do the work. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know if they're going to listen to that if you just say, go watch Brad and Justin's <clears throat> YouTube channel. They're oh, going to be like, oh, whatever. You know? I, I do have another tip, though. Ask them, 
Who is your um, optimal body? So pick a. So I did this with like a girl. Role model. I did this with with a girl before who um, was one of my friends from back home, and she was just a cardio queen. And I was always like, you gotta stop being that cardio queen. And I said to her, I said, tell me, who is your optimal body type? female celebrity out there. Like, who would you want to look like when you look in the mirror? And they, she said, I think it was Jessica Alba. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go find Jessica Alba's, what she does for workouts, what she does for exercise. I did a video on it too. Yeah, I remember that video <laughs> with like a gallon of water. Yeah. Or yeah. And um, I was like, okay, here's a video of me doing a typical Jessica Alba workout according to her personal trainer. And it's not being on a treadmill for 60 minutes or 90 yeah, minutes so or whatever sweet, it is. Yeah. So that's what I would say to her is, Ask her, who do you want to look like? Go do a little research on what that celebrity or whoever that person is, what they're doing. And I mean, get them to look at Jessica's photo. You want to look like a lean, like healthy, fit girl like Jessica? And then watch her videos. Like this is what she does. I was do going to say, you got to be really careful with like media. Like if you're reading Star mm -hmm. Magazine to find out about Beyonce's diet, it's probably going to tell you she drinks lemon water with cayenne pepper. Or and cayenne pepper, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so just be careful when you're looking at the media because a lot of times it's not the truth. I bet you, you call it Beyonce and you ask her, that's not, yeah, the, so, not what she's really doing. So don't Google Beyonce diet. No. Google Beyonce's personal trainer. And then that personal trainer probably has interviews. They would publish their in women's now, health maybe. or all these different magazines and yeah, they'll, they'll tell you like that's what I did to find Jessica that, Alba. Yeah that would be a better way to go than yeah. just googling Beyonce's diet yeah. or whatever because yeah a lot of celebrities they aren't public about their training and nutrition and I think it's probably because they know there would be controversy because everyone has their own opinions on the best way to diet and the best way to work out and everything so if a celebrity puts their stuff out there, they're probably going to get a lot of commentary on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know what to say about that, but I just think that these girls who are just trying to get skinny and not build muscle, they haven't been introduced to the real truth of what it takes to burn fat versus burning muscle. And so yeah. if you could sit down, explain in detail, um, why starving yourself isn't healthy for you and and talk about malnutrition talk about some of the bad side effects and symptoms that can come from malnourishment mm -hmm. and you know make it a real thing and that there is real danger to just stopping eating like we're human beings you need to eat to survive and you can't not eat it not eating is not an option so just, I would say, have that heart-to-heart -heart discussion, come up with a bunch of reasons why that will convince them that they actually do need to eat and that supporting their athletic lifestyle is gonna get them a leaner, tighter, more toned body, and so they just won't be like a coat hanger, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Alma J says, is non-GMO soy milk unhealthy? I use the organic, unsweetened kind because it's higher in protein than other milks. Well, it's better than the GMO. <laughs> yeah, milk, I know. <laughs> but it's not something that I ever take. Um, Soy milk is off of our grocery list because we just don't consume anything with soy. Soy-based, yeah. yeah. Soy-based products. So we go for almond milk or coconut milk yeah. or other like maybe like, cashew I milk mean, or something instead of soy. Like honestly, like you shouldn't be going to soy to get your protein. Like there's soy is like I mean this person may be uh, vegan yeah but on the list of protein sources like soy is so down there from a quality standpoint like from an amino acid profile like it's just from a nutrient standpoint yeah even if you are vegan I wh why not almond milk instead you know that's what I would have you doing instead yeah. and yeah I mean in terms of getting your protein that way like even all milks like that are going to have a small amount of protein compared to the amount you'd have to consume yeah. so I mean, yeah, I would rather have you have dairy milk than soy milk. Mm, wow, you yeah. hear that, guys? Do you hear that one? All right. <laughs> so Carrie Estes says, when you go traveling, how do you stay healthy when surrounded by junk food? Yeah, we've talked a little bit about traveling, like what to eat when traveling and stuff in previous episodes, so make sure you listen to all of our other podcasts too. It's a lot of listening for you. <laughs> um, but in short, like... The junk food that you're surrounded by, you're always surrounded by junk food. Like in this world that we live in, like every store that you go to is going to have healthy mm -hmm. food and junk food. You just have to not notice it and try to look and keep your eye out for the food that is healthy because even airports have healthy options. It's not even it's not, even not to notice it. It's yeah, just, just to make the decision it. that yeah. it's not 
what you want to fuel your body with. Right. Like, and even if you're like tempted by it, that doesn't mean you have to go for it. But it's not to say that every once in a while you can't do it. Like yeah. that's why we build in cheat meals. Right. So there's going to be times where we're like that. And we're like, the other day we went out for a burger and fries mm-hmm. and it was delicious. We enjoyed it. Like, but it was built in. Like we're not just doing it every single night and allowing that compound effect to just keep building, building, and building. It's like it's a once in a while thing. I had some sour gummy worms at the airport not that long ago. Did you? Remember that? <laughs> oh, I don't know if it was time when you were with me or not with me, but I'm just saying like we're not completely immune to that. I like sour gummy worms. Do I think they're living approved? Absolutely not. Yeah. But can I have them once in a blue moon? Totally. Because she's know? getting her workouts right. in. She's eating healthy like 90% of the time. Yeah. So when you're doing the right things, most of the time you can still have a little bit of that fun in life. Yeah. So it depends on where you are in your journey. Like if you're still, you know, you're not on that path of, you know, maintaining your workouts, getting in good workouts and eating healthy most of the time and you're just kind of like picking at things and you're going on these tangents where you're like, I'm being healthy and I'm not and then I'm just going down this rocky slope, mm-hmm. you know, that's when you need to like, you know, get your focus on. But yeah. If you're living lean like us and like a lot of you guys out there, you can enjoy that every once in a while. The other thing I want to mention about <clears throat> traveling and being surrounded by junk food is that, you know, I don't know. Are we talking about junk food in the airport? If we are, you're only in the airport for like a few hours. Yeah, but I mean, you could have a long layover, but you're not like there for days. Yeah, but it's also maybe like when you're traveling, you don't have a like kitchen. Like your relative's house? Yeah, you don't have a kitchen, so or, your only yeah. option is fast food. So I know, but, maybe, but that's I, only if you see it that way. I you think, know, Brad and I travel and we find ways to eat healthy. Yeah, I think the bottom yeah. line is, guys, like you can find healthier food anywhere. Anywhere. Even you walk into Burger King or McDonald's, there's healthier food there. It's totally. not optimal but we're not trying to be optimal 365. We're just going for progress 365. So um, we'll leave it at that. Like just don't beat yourself up over these little things. Yeah. Abby Lopez on Snapchat wants to know, is this hot cereal Live Lean approved? I took a picture so you can see all the ingredients. My parents forced me to drink this because they think it will help me gain muscle mass, but I strongly disagree. What do you think if it's not approved, what can be an alternative? And what can I tell my parents respectfully if it's not healthy? Hmm. So let me just scan in on the photo. Yeah. So it looks like it's <clears throat> like one of those. It's like a corn cereal. 13 grain cereals. So like wheat, oats, corn, yeah. brown sugar, barley millet. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Abby, I mean, it's better than most cereals parents are feeding their kids. <laughs> Better than Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes. Yeah, <clears throat> so it's like it's on that scale again that we always talk about. It's like people are like, is this healthy? Well, compared to what? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, I tip. I wouldn't eat this cereal, but like I said, it's better than what most parents are feeding their kids. And if you are the kid, if you're not paying for the groceries, you're living under their household or under their roof. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunately, you got to go with the flow and that's not that bad of a cereal to put up a big fuss over. So I agree. And, you know, chances are we don't know like what country you're from or how it works there. But if you're a teenager and you're living with your parents now, you're not going to be living there forever. When you are an adult, you buy your own groceries and you decide what you eat instead. Yeah. So alternatives for this cereal. I mean, we have uh, the Live Lean cereal. What's it called? A cereal with protein milk from our Live Lean 20 diet. That is a good cereal alternative that has zero grains in it. Um, you could eat, you know, a variety. Of, all the food that we talk about could be an alternative for eating that. But, you know, like you said, you're under your parents' roof right now. You may have to just eat what they want you to eat and not fight with your parents because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like we said, family is so important. Please don't take your guys' families for granted because it is not guaranteed that they will still be here tomorrow. Yeah, and you're still so young too. Yes. Um, so Don't honest, fight with your honestly, family. it's it's a decent cereal. Go with it. Yes, you're fine. All right, guys, that's the tenth question. That's the show. Thank you once again for being along this journey with us. It got a little emotional on today's show, I but know, I did. proud and of you, babe, for getting that, uh, putting that out there for everybody to know that yeah. you know we didn't live this 
like charmed life, charmed life with yeah. no problems, no issues. Like, you know, we all go through things. So um, hopefully that helps you guys get through any hard problems that you're having, going through right now, or you have been through. Yeah. Um, we're all real. We're all in this together. And, mm -hmm. you know. And we're an open book and we're not <clears throat> hiding anything from our life story. And we're, we're, we're just being open. We're all family here, guys. So hopefully yeah. you appreciate our openness. Uh, what's the question of the day? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> you know, I feel like I always use the last question to, to throw to you guys, but I want to know, like when you were growing up, like in your teenage year, depending on the age you're at right now, but if you're already in your adulthood, what did you eat like during your teenage years? Were you really healthy and strict as a teenager or did you eat terribly and then clean things up later? Mm -hmm. Good question. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. And Live and lean. Live and lean. You guys are the best. See you next week. Boy. Big shout out to all our Live Lean podcast listeners. We love you and would so appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review. We need your feedback to improve and grow. So please give us a review right now.